Morning, glory, evening, grace, feather, and sister. It's everybody back on with us here uh, with our word awakening. And I look forward to uh, continuing in the book of Psalms in the 40, 40, uh, la, 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 sorry, 41st chapter of the book of Psalms. Going to cover quite a bit of ground today as far as the verses are concerned. And also look forward to having a good time in prayer. And, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, just, uh, <coughs> Oh, by way of prayer request, we have somebody that we're going to be mentioning now. Going to start mentioning a uh, another missionary family that my family has actually uh, partnered with, uh, with uh, both uh, financial and prayer support. The Russell family. Uh, they're out of Faith Baptist Church in Chihalis, Washington. If I'm saying Chihalis right, that's up in Washington State. And um, uh, Sister Russell, the uh, the. Uh, mom, wife of the family, uh, first name Sarah, uh, she has uh, some kind of, uh, having some kind of sickness that's having, excuse me, that's having to be attended to, and so they're at a hospital around there where they're from in Washington State at the time being. I think that's to do with her immune system being attacked. So remember Sister Russell, like in your prayer, so they're having to, you know, come off of uh, coming, come out of Mexico there for a few months. So remember them as you would pray. And that's about the uh, only individual right off top that I can think of uh, that I can think of uh, personally that I know of. But let's do pray one for another for all the physical needs, financial needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs that God would meet each and every one and that God would have his will and way <clears throat> in our hearts and in our lives. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and so with that being said, of course, always praying for revival. We'll go ahead now and have a word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the gifts of sin. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all the many blessings that you bestowed upon our hearts and upon our lives, Lord, and for our salvation and for this ministry and to come back and to gather in your name. And uh, we just pray that uh, we would pray, Lord, according to your will and that you would uh, lead and guide our uh, our thoughts and our hearts as we pray now and that we would have that heart for revival, Lord God, have that spirit of prayer for revival and really, really desire revival, Lord God, to see you work on hearts and souls and that you would do a mighty work in hearts and souls of people, and we pray for all the needs, Lord God, that are out there for the uh, one uh, that uh, that we know of, that you would uh, help Sister Russell, of course, also help the family, pray that you heal her body as well as uh, her husband and her kids, that you'd give them grace during this time, and that uh, they would get back to Mexico when you're allotted time and be used mightily of thee, and we pray for all the others out there that are sick in body, those that are having procedures, recovering from seizures, other people with diseases, cancers, and so forth, that you would just touch their bodies in a mighty way, and uh, be with their families as they mourn alongside them, and uh, we pray for all the spiritual needs, certainly, that you would save the lost, and that you would uh, encourage the discouraged, reclaim the backslid, and uh, help hearts and souls, Lord, like only you can, that you would revive churches, that you'd be with all the financial needs and emotional needs as well, you know what all of us stand in need of, and just pray that you would just uh, meet those needs, Lord God, according to your will, and just help hearts and souls in that facet that only you can. <clears throat> And that you would just uh, revive churches, that you'd be with all pastors, assistant pastors, uh, those that take part in the church, deacons, ushers, Sunday school teachers, treasurers, secretaries, janitors, uh, that you would just uh, be with all of our churches, all of our Bible-believing churches, that they'd have hearts for you, hearts for revival, heart for the lost, and that you just use them in a mighty way, that you'd be with all of your other men, uh, that you'd also be with uh, missionaries, evangelists, and uh, young preachers, and uh, lay preachers and uh, other uh, men of God that are waiting for another full-time ministry, praying for doors to open, that you just lead God and direct them, and use them in a mighty, mighty way, Father God, that you just encourage your men, that all missionaries will get their necessary support, and bring revival to the part of the world that they're in, and that you just to be with them in that mighty way that only you can, Father. And that you just continue to lead God all of us, lead God all of our hearts and our souls to be used of thee. And that way that would be pleasing unto you, that you'd be with all of our government leaders, that you'd be with our president, our vice president, all those that serve on their administration, all of our state governors, those that serve in the U.S. Senate and Congress, all state senators, those that serve as state representatives and then state assembly, that you'd be with city mayors, town supervisors, all those that serve on on uh, city and town council, that you just save those who are lost, help those who are saved. May the country go in a direction that you have it to go in. May we have a national revival that would, that would affect politicians, you know, that would cause them to look for you, to, to for their leadership. And even if uh, a revival wouldn't affect our politicians, I certainly do pray that our freedoms would stay intact to worship you in the spirit and the truth, and to be the right witness that we ought to be for your Father. 
and that we would ever be bold and uncompromising. And I did fail to mention, I pray that you'd be with, uh, with us as we go out this Monday on Halloween and go street preaching uh, for me and my wife, that we just have liberty to be used mightily of thee, and that you would just have your will and way in our hearts and in our lives, Lord, and that you just give us an unction from on high and be with our services today, Lord God. Be with us as we preach here in the Middle week prayer meeting, uh, that you would just help us as we go through Psalm 41, and that you just help hearts and souls, Lord, and fasteth than only you can. And we'll certainly be careful to give you all and all the praise and all the glory for all because we're in you alone for it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. We pray all these things. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and uh, by way of announcements, I um, got everything going on sprigly as scheduled right now. Uh, with our word awakening, we are going to be on the road on a couple of weeks. It's actually a good thing. Going to be going to uh, uh, to at least one church in uh, South Carolina. And after that, we do have more meetings uh, that, that are going to be scheduled. But we're going to be on the road here in a couple of weeks, like in the... Uh, I think that would kind of like this. <laughs> The uh, second weekend in uh, the second weekend of November, I know that's the Sunday after Veterans Day, so that means scheduled on the 13th. So I'll see what we'll be doing here uh, with a uh, word awakening. I'm not sure exactly how we how we'll be doing with the revival preaching and midweek uh, prayer meeting and all, uh, but we'll certainly let everybody know the schedule as well as after that, like whenever we start traveling, uh, like a bit more to raise more support. Uh, with that being said, and we did want to go ahead and move to New York State very soon in a few months, but that's probably going to be later in 2023, a bit later after that, probably more like summer of 2023 at the earliest. And so just to sort of keep us in your thoughts, prayers, of course, the Lord knows everything. And uh, so... Uh, so the Lord, you know, knows it all, but we have more support that we have to raise, and the Lord's opening up those doors to get that support, so we certainly do praise and honor God for that. Amen. And so uh, just keep us in your prayers as well as we pray for everybody out there. And now we go to the uh, 41st Psalm here, the 41st Psalm, back to the 41st Psalm. Of course, we looked at verses 1 to 3 last week. We'll be looking at verses 4 to 9 this week. So actually, I should be able to finish up the psalm next week. But looking here today at verses 4 to 9, it says, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die, and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they cleaveth fast unto him, and now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my, eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. And so continuing our message here today, a prayer for assurance. And our Lord, we do love you, and so thankful, Lord God, for our salvation, for this ministry, for the time of prayer uh, that we have already had. And just pray that you'd open our hearts and minds to your word. Just give us strength, Lord God, to preach it, uh, to in that way that be pleasing unto you. Just give us clarity of thought, clarity of mind, and just help hearts and souls, Lord, in that facet that only you can. That's what we're here for, Lord. And may we get all that we ought to be out of the text, Lord, and we'll be careful to give you honor, all, all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory for all because you're in you alone. For it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. Amen. And amen. And so continuing the message here, a prayer for assurance. And as we said last week uh, in our introduction, this was the prayer of a sick man being attacked by cruel enemies. You know, it was written by David, so it's likely an experience that David had. And our first point there last week was those who consider the poor, verses 1 to 3. And we looked at a lot of really good verses, a lot about charity and all last week. And so now coming to our second point, which constitutes verses 4 to 9, a cry for mercy. A cry for mercy. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. And I believe we mentioned this, um, might have been like, what might have not have been last week, that might have been the 40th Psalm, I can't remember exactly, might have been like when we were still looking at the, uh, at the 40th Psalm a couple weeks ago, but nonetheless, we mentioned that, I remember, though, about having the mercy of God. And we're going to look at some particular things here, and as we said, there's certainly a reason here uh, that David writes uh, for the Lord to be merciful unto him, and we read those things there, and, and see there David has needs, there are, you know, people that are against David, he needs the mercy of God that way, but you know, we all need mercy each and every day. You know, even if you're in the center of God's will, that's wonderful. But, you know, you need the mercy of God to remain in the center of God's will. And you need the mercy of God to protect you from the enemy, the devil. 
You know, you need God's mercy when you get on the road. You know, you need God's mercy in all things. You know, we need God's mercy when we stand up and preach. You know, we're always in need of the Lord's mercy. And the wonderful thing is that God has mercy. And God will certainly give us his mercy. You know, whenever we do mess up, you know, whenever we do sin. If that's whenever we sin or whenever, you know, other people, you know, like are against us. Like when, you know, things happen. You know, whenever somebody does us wrong. You know, when we get heartbroken. But God's mercy is always there. Very, pop, 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 very popular verse here out of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 4. It says, But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. See, the wonderful thing is to know that God is rich in mercy. He is rich whenever you need his mercy. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 16. <clears throat> Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So now we're going to look at a couple of things here that are really going to help us get the mercy of God. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That's already talking about prayer. You know, we must pray. That's what this message is. You know, a prayer for assurance. We certainly must pray for the Lord's mercy. Now, I'm glad even when I, when I haven't prayed, like especially in my younger years when I wasn't nearly as much of a prayer warrior as I was now, I'm glad God still showed me his mercy. But if we really want to experience that mercy, we need to pray for it. If that is because we have fallen into sin, if that is because there's some type of issue going on, you know, like David, you know, there's somebody talking bad about us, there's somebody trying to harm us. Or, you know, that could be, you know, like a, a loved one, you know, who has a disease, has cancer, you know, something of that nature. Whatever it is, we're going to get, we're going to obtain, as it says there, a lot more of that mercy when we pray for it. Whenever we're in prayer, like I said, if you are in the center of God's will, wonderful, you need to keep praying for mercy. To remain in God's will, that God would continue to use you. That you would have revival, a real revival, and that you would have the Lord's power. Well, see, like a lot of people, you know, you talk about mercy. They want God's mercy, but they don't want to do any, you know, anything of their part. You know, they don't want to pray. They don't want to live right. But see, we need to pray for that mercy because, you know, that's going to help us. If we're out of God's will and we're praying for mercy to get back into his will or, you know, whatever situation, whatever it is that's going on. And now another really popular verse here having to do with this in Psalm 23, Psalm 23, very popular text. And verse number 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. See, a lot of people just want to say that there. Well, God's mercy is always going to be there with me. But then look, though, at that next phrase. If you really want to experience the mercy of God and really want to be right with God, the latter phrase here will really tell you what you ought to do. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Say, so we want that mercy, we ought to pray for it. Pray for that mercy, have that mercy, then let's do what God wants us to. Let's dwell in His house forever. Let's dwell in His presence forever. You know, get in God's will. Like me and my wife, you know, through kind of through our personal devotions and all, you know, we're just talking about that. You know, we've, you know, we mentioned that very, very often, you know, with this ministry. What's God's will for my life? Well, you know, that, that, that's different for every individual. You're an individual and God has a will for you as an individual. You know, his will for you might be similar to somebody else's. But we got to, if we're going to have that mercy, really want to experience it, though, we got to live right. You know, some things are, you know, all right for everybody. Everybody's to live right. Everybody is to abstain from sin. You know, everybody's to be faithful to the house of God. You know, if there's a local Bible-believing church in your area, you know, we stress that because we've had a number of listeners, you know, to this ministry. You know, they don't have a Bible-preaching church in their area, which happens. That's why I'm a missionary. But, though, if we really want to experience God's mercy, we've got to get into his will. We have to pray. 
And now going back here to the 41st Psalm, continuing on here, we look at verse number 4. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me, heal my soul. See letter A here, heal my soul. And, you know, that I believe that can mean a number of different things, making some different application. That could be somebody who's fallen into sin, which we're about to look at. That could be somebody who's been, you know, heartbroken, who's been done wrong, you know, by somebody or something or another. <clears throat> but the Lord will, though. He will heal our soul. And once again, kind of along that same lines that we were looking about, having the mercy of God, how that should lead us to prayer and lead us to living right, we're going to see the same thing about having a healed soul. Psalm 103.3 Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So you really want your soul to be healed, live right. Like we looked at a heart being heartbroken in our revival preaching last week. Like we looked at last week, you know, about being heartbroken. You know, like, like we said there, that didn't really have anything to do with going into sin. You know, it's being heartbroken because somebody did you wrong. But, you know, oftentimes, just about every time we get that, that, you know, have that heartbreak, something happens, God does that to purge us to bring forth more fruit. You know, whenever that does happen, we need to get rid of all the iniquity in our life. To have our soul healed. You know, if you want your soul to be healed because of heartbreak, something going on, or, or certainly, you know, if you're a person that has, you know, fallen into sin and you want the mercy of God, and you have fallen into sin, got out of God's will, then, you know, you need to get that sin out of your life and get right with God. Like Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. See, we got to have that atonement. You want to have your soul healed, you got to be washed in the blood. See, like we looked at last week, God can heal a broken heart. You know, even if that's, you know, you haven't done anything wrong, even if you were guilty in the, I mean, excuse me, even if you were innocent in the matter. You know, if that's not even an issue of sin, you know, somebody just did you wrong and you're heartbroken. The Lord can certainly heal that soul. And then also, if you have sinned, you can be forgiven. You can certainly experience the mercy of God, as lots of people have over their lifetime, myself included. But we have to be atoned, though, back to God. And that includes, you know, getting our heart right not having any sin in our life anymore. And then continuing on here, very important, a uh, very important thing that we're going to make mention of here. In verse number 4, I'm sorry, we're still in verse number 3. Actually, we're still in verse number 3. Forgive me. No, we're in verse number 4. I'm sorry, verse number 3. I thought we covered last year. I apologize. We have verse 4. Of course, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. For I have sinned against thee, letter B. There has to be a confession of sin. Letter B here, confession of sin. Because there are too many people who simply try to hide their sin. But if you really want to be healed, if you have sinned, you got to be honest and confess it. You know, we can't cover up our sin and, you know, point, point fingers at somebody else. We just have to be honest and say, I've done wrong, or I made a wrong decision. You know, sometimes, like, like people, you know, they just make wrong decisions in their life. That may not so much be going into sin, like, you know, I made a wrong decision by smoking a cigarette, or drinking a beer, or having an affair, or looking at pornography. You know, maybe not even so much in that way, but, you know, sometimes, though, we're supposed to do something, and we don't do it. Or sometimes, you know, we're supposed to go in this direction, but we go in that direction. Like I was telling my wife, I made some of those mistakes. I'll have to confess it to you. I'll confess it to you here, the, the list, you know, my listening congregation. Like I was telling my wife the last couple of weeks, actually. I said, you know, I myself, you know, I made some wrong decisions. I wasn't getting into sin, you know, like, you know, doing things that the Bible calls sin. I wasn't any, you know, open or, 
you know, like open sin there, but I made some wrong decisions, you know, like with our ministry, and I've actually mentioned that a little bit before. You know, like when uh, my family first went back into full-time ministry back in 2019, you know, we were going to start like a, like a deaf and blind ministry where we currently live in the Birmingham, Alabama area. And there was a noble effort behind that. A big part of the reason why we were doing that was because of my mother-in-law, because of, you know, her failing health. But that wasn't what God wanted us to do. You know, that was a very, you know, a very noble thing, you know, to think of you, you know, your relatives and all. You know, my mother-in-law with my wife there to help her and everything. You know, that was noble, but, you know, that wasn't the Lord's will, you know, for our life. And, you know, I made a couple of wrong decisions, you know, just with the direction, you know, of the ministry, you know, and where my family was supposed to be. So, you know what I had to do? I confessed it. I confessed it to God. I confessed it to my wife and daughter because, you know, that that's my family. They were a part of it. I said, hey, you know, we, we never should have done this here. You know, that was a very noble thing. You know, nothing wrong with it. But that wasn't what God, you know, wanted us to do. <clears throat> and, you know, there could be something like that. You know, just a decision, you know, that, that, you, that you made that was wrong. Or that could be some type of open sin. Let's look here at Leviticus chapter number 26 and verses 40 to 45. It says, If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass which, the trespass, which they have trespassed against me, and that they also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also walk contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Then while I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, while I remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbath, while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Because even because they despise my judgments, and because they are so aboard my statutes, and yet for all that when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. So, you know, you just cannot have a walk with God without confessing sin. You know, that's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, it's very blunt, you know, very clear all through the Word of God. You know, we have to confess our iniquities. You know, we have to confess our wrongdoings. You know, we'll certainly see God move a lot more. We'll see... We'll see a lot more fruit in our lives, you know, if we would, you know, confess sin. Go we'll over to the book of Nehemiah, chapter number 1. First chapter of Nehemiah, looking at verses 1 to 9. I want to give everybody, let everybody know, you know, where we are here. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hachaliah, And it came to pass in the month Chislu, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan the palace that Hannah and I, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also was broken down, and the gates thereof were burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. See, that's the kind of heart there that we need to have towards sin. You know, that might not even be our own sin, certainly, first and foremost, of our own sin. See, that's what confession also shows. It shows that you're brokenhearted about your sin. See, therein lies the problem with people today, you know, even in fundamental churches. You know, they're not brokenhearted, you know, over their sin. Like somebody that's, you know, covering up their sin, you know, and pointing fingers at somebody else. You know, that's somebody that's not brokenhearted, like over their own wrongdoings. But see here, Nehemiah, you know, he was brokenhearted, you know, over the sin of his whole people. You know, something that, you know, he may not even necessarily, you know, had anything to do with, just over, you know, his own, you know, his own countrymen. You know, he wept and mourned, you know, he fasted. Verse 5, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thy eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess 
the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both thy and my father's house of sin. See, my father's house. You know, even sorry for the sin, you know, of the previous generation. You know, even though Nehemiah, you know, certainly didn't have anything to do with that. You know, he was still broken hearted, you know, like over their own doings, you know, that the previous generation did. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if you turn unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, though there were of you cast out into the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. You know, see, having a real, you know, broken heart, you know, like over sin. You know, how much more, you know, would we see God move, you know, the revival, you know, that we could possibly have, you know, if people, you know, were broken hearted, you know, like about their sin, you know, and their wrongdoings. And very familiar text here, you know, this is a salvation verse, you know, but just shows us, you know, confession, that's certainly a part of salvation, you know, Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See, you can't have salvation, you know, without confession. You know, you're not going to go anywhere with God if you don't confess of your sins. James chapter 5 and verse number 16. James 5, 16, confess your thoughts one to another. And pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, we need to confess our faults one to another. Now, we have to be very discreet about this. You know, you surely should not confess you. I would not confess my faults to a number of different people, but maybe like a couple of different classifications of people, you know, that we can mention. You know, I wouldn't confess my thoughts to a younger believer, somebody, you know, that's really younger in the Lord, that's not as far along with God as I am, because that could be a stumbling block, you know, to somebody who was looking up, you know, to me, a preacher in a full-time ministry. I certainly would not confess my thoughts, you know, to a lost person, you know, either. I would confess my thoughts, you know, to a peer or to an older believer. You know, you should do this to appear somebody that's kind of in the same, you know, spiritual boat that you are, or an elder believer, you know, not just an elder person, but somebody that's, you know, older in the Lord than you, you know, somebody that, you know, you look up to, like a pastor or so forth. But see, confess our thoughts, you know, one to another, you know, and pray one for another that we might be healed, see, like that healing, you know, that healing from sin, you know, that's simply not going to come, you know, until we can of our wrongs. First John chapter 1. It's in verse number 9. Very familiar verse here. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, everybody's born in sin and everybody has a sin nature. You know, that's why God wants us, you know, to confess our sins. You know, we're not doing ourselves any favor or, you know, God any favor. You know, God knows the wrongs that we've done, you know, better than we do. You know, God knows that we've done wrong, and if we want to, you know, restore fellowship with Him, you know, we have to confess of those sins, you know, like we've been saying here. You know, you're not going to go anywhere in your spiritual life if you don't confess that sin. And now kind of closing things out here, verses 5 to 9, you know, we're all going to look at together. So this final sub-point here will go rather quickly. I'm going back here to Psalm 41 and starting in verse 5. It says, Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me, against me, do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which deed of my bread hath lifted up his heel against me. And see, let her see, oh, those who speak evil of David. You know, and just like God, you know, uses people to do his work, the devil uses people to do his work. You know, me and my wife, you know, we were just talking about that in our personal devotions. You know, lost people, they don't really have nothing but a choice. You know, they have nothing but a choice to be used of the devil. You know, that, that could be somebody who was not raised in a Christian home. You know, somebody that was raised in a very troubled home. 
who just continues, you know, living that lifestyle of destruction and, and uh, you know, just trying, you know, to be a hindrance to the work of God. That could be a lost person. I was raised in a Christian home, and, you know, you probably know some of those people. You know, you have preacher's kids, you know, who are lost, who don't get saved, who cause a lot of trouble, you know, who cause, who cause you know, who cause their, their dad preacher a lot of trouble, and, you know, their mom a lot of trouble, and other people in the church, you know, trouble. But, you know, the devil does use people, you know, the devil uses people to do his work as well. And, you know, we have to pray for the Lord's mercy that God, you know, would deliver us from those people. And like we said there, the last part, you know, you could be broken hearted. Like it said there, you know, a familiar friend. You know, somebody who was, you know, a good friend to you, you know, might have broke your heart. Well, you know, that you're not the only person that that's happened to. Like Obadiah, verse number 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. See, even here, you know, this, of course, was Obadiah's, you know, message here to Edom. And he's saying here, you know, those, you know, that uh, <clears throat> just like the Edomites, you know, that they were a brother tribe to Israel. You know, they should have been, you know, they should have helped Israel, but they didn't. You know, in the same way, you know, that the Edomites turned on the Jews and just laughed and everything. You know, whenever whenever the Israelites were attacked, that same thing is going to happen to the Edomites. See, everybody reaps what they sow. Everybody reaps what they sow. The Edomites did that to Judah. And now another tribe is also going to do that, you know, to the, is going to do that to the Edomites. See, and how about this one here? This is one we're all probably familiar with when it comes to betrayal. John chapter number 13. You know, we looked at that last week when we looked at our, uh, we were looking at heartbreak with our revival preaching. John 13 and verse number 18. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture might be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. See what we just read there in the Psalms. And then verse 21, when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. See, that betrayal happened to you and to the Lord Jesus Christ, our wonderful, majestic Savior. You know, he went through that heartbreak. You know, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But the Lord, though, can heal your heart. And if that has happened with a friend betraying you, God will replace that person. Judas Iscariot, well, really, we could say he had a couple of replacements. Like there was Matthias, yes, I know, whom the disciples chose. And then there was somebody else who was that that came along, another apostle, the apostle Paul. See, God will replace, for lack of better words, you know, will replace that person. You know, God will heal your heart and give you that which you need if you suffer heart. You know, God will heal you. Amen. But stay in his will and walk with him. You know, kind of what we have here right now is kind of very similar to what we just looked at with our revival preaching of heartbreak. But stay with the stuff. You know, stay with God and God will provide for you. God will deliver you. God will give you that which you need. Amen. God will give you the good brethren and the good sister in the faith. Amen. That you need to help you along. So thanks so much for being with us here. Wonderful stuff there from the Word of God. And so you come back and be with us. Uh, like I said, we're going to be doing the revival preaching tomorrow. Going to be looking at a biblical woman. So very excited about that. So you come on back and be with us then. And then next week we'll be finishing up the 41st Psalm. And so thanks so much for being with us. And we'll see you next time. Until we see you again, we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the gifts of sin. We're so thankful, Lord God, for your grace and for your mercy. And so thankful for the opportunity, Lord God, to open up the Word of God and to preach and to help your people. And just pray that we take all things, apply them to our hearts and lives, that we live holy, that we live pure, Lord God, that we would, you know, embrace your mercy and would accept your mercy, but also... You know, not just use that mercy whenever we sin, but uh, but use that mercy to have revival, to walk with you, to walk close to you. And that we'd all go down that path, that direction that you have for us, and that we wouldn't make those mistakes, wrong decisions, but walk close to you and make the right and make the right decisions and do what you'd have us to do, Lord, and be what you'd have us to be. And bless all our dear listeners. Give them a special blessing. Know each and every of your heart. Just pray that you'd help us all according to your will. First in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. 
in a man. And thank you so much, folks, for being with us. And we'll see you next time. Until then, break in the shadows, stay away. I'm Dr. Cooper, and I love you, and I appreciate you.